Hello everyone, and thank you for joining me again for another thought for the day, uh, today being Tuesday the 16th of June. Now, uh, I want to follow on from uh, a thought that we were having last night. I appreciate last night's message might have been uh, very challenging, and very thought-provoking. I don't want to go into it in the same intensity or depth that we did last night. But uh, I do want to stay with this idea of testing and being tested. Now, I say that because uh, I believe that that's literally what's happening to the people of God, the worldwide church at the moment. We are being tested um, by going through our present predicament. You know, we're being tested because we're not allowed uh, to gather together to worship. We're not allowed to open our church buildings. Uh, we've got to amend or suspend so much of our programs. It is a testing time and we are being tried. We are even being tempted at the moment. And of course, that made me think of the trials and the temptation that the Lord Jesus Christ went through himself when he was tempted by Satan in the wilderness. We read about it in Matthew chapter 4. And that's a really low point for the Lord. And it comes after uh, a very high point in his life and in his ministry as well. How often does that not happen in our own lives, friends? After some sort of a mountaintop experience, we find ourselves in the, the valley below. Well, just before his temptation, the Lord Jesus Christ had been baptised in the River Jordan uh, by John the Baptist. And that was a, a wonderful experience from him. Remember that great voice which boomed out from heaven. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. What an affirmation. And of course, not only that, we have the Holy Spirit himself in the form of a dove descending and landing on the Lord Jesus Christ. So that was a real high point for Jesus. Uh, baptism is a real high point for anybody, of course. Uh, but from that height, uh, Jesus went into the depths of being tempted by Satan in the wilderness. Now, again, um, just to set a further context, uh, Christ had been um, fasting and praying in the wilderness uh, for 40 days and 40 nights. So uh, he would have been in a weakened condition, okay, uh, physically speaking. And he uh, suddenly is confronted by none other than Satan himself. Now, just a wee note on that as well, by the way, because Satan isn't omnipresent. Uh, that's an attribute of God and God alone. God is omnipresent. God is everywhere at the same time. Satan does not have that ability. Uh, he has to be in one place at any one given time. And at this time, Satan was in the wilderness he made sure of it, I'm sure, that he was alone with Christ in his physically weakened condition. The ideal time uh, to be tempted. And what's the first thing he tempts the Lord with? By the way, um, think about it. Fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, the Lord would have been hungry. He would have been weak with hunger. And that's the first thing Satan puts before him. Uh, the thought of if he obeys him, listens to Satan, if he turns stones into bread, well, then he'll have food. And the Lord must have been sorely tempted. Um, and again, we have to remind ourselves, friends, that there's no sin in being tempted. The, the Lord is being tempted here uh, not once, not twice, but three times by none other than Satan himself. Uh, so there's no sin in being tempted. Even the Lord was tempted. No, remember that the sin is in giving in to the temptation. Uh, that's the hard part. Uh, but having said that, we are given assurances from Scripture 
that we're not going to be tested beyond our capacity to withstand that temptation. We can never say and hold up our hands and try to justify falling into temp falling into sin uh, from being tempted. We, we can never justify that by saying the temptation was too much for me. Listen to what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 13. He says, first of all, it doesn't matter what temptation um, we have. It's not going to be special to us. Uh, it's going to be such as is common to other people as well. Um, and having said that, uh, Paul says that God is faithful and he will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation, he will also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear that temptation. So there we have it, friends. Um, we have no excuse for falling into temptation. We can resist. We're not going to be over tempted in that sense. And not only will, tempt, will it be um, deemed too much for us to bear, we'll also be given an escape route. We'll be able to wriggle out, if that's the correct expression, uh, to whatever temptation we're being confronted with. So uh, we're also told, by the way, elsewhere in Scripture, um, that if we resist even the devil himself, um, he will flee from us. So we have the capacity to resist temptation. It's not a sin to be tempted, even though we do feel guilty at times when we're tempted. Um, we are able to withstand and do something to escape the temptation. Uh, the other thing we've got to remember as well, friends, uh, as with Satan coming at Jesus with this uh, hunger um, uh, as a as a tool. That's again a tried and trusted strategy of Satan. Uh, if you have any weakness at all, you can be very sure that's what he's going to target. He's going to come at you at your weakest point. He'll find a chink in your armour, as it were, and that's what he'll target. But in spite of that, uh, even in your weakness, at your weak point, the Lord will make sure that you are not over tempted and that you also have a means to escape falling um, into sin from giving in to temptation. Now, having said all that, uh, how does the Lord Jesus Christ cope in his weakened physical condition uh, with the ongoing temptation of Satan? He's tempted three times. Well, I'm sure many of us know how he is able to refute and stand against Satan. Uh, each time that he's tempted, he's able to refute, to withstand that temptation by referring to scripture. He basically quotes scripture. And again, uh, I'm sure that the Lord Jesus Christ didn't have a whole pile of scrolls on his person when he was in the wilderness for that uh, period of time. He would have been familiar with scripture. He would have scripture in his mind and he was able to recall that uh, when it was most needed. And the other thing that we've got to remember as well, I, I know the Lord would have been physically weak and hungry and thirsty and so forth. But he had just spent an extended period of time in fasting and prayer. So although he was weakened physically, he would have been strengthened spiritually through prayer and fasting. So those are the two tools, if you like, that he used to overcome the temptation of the devil himself. He was able to rely on his familiarity with scripture and in his mode of prayer. And that's the lesson for us, friends. As I've said, as a church, a worldwide church, we're going through a very difficult period of time at the moment. We're being tested. We're being tried, perhaps even by Satan and his powers as well. And we have to do, quite simply, what the Lord Jesus Christ did. We have to get into a mode of prayer, 
even prayer and fasting. We have to get into that mode and we've also to familiarise ourselves uh, and use scripture. That's the way forward, friends. It's a follow on from what I was saying last night. We have to really prioritise Christ and the things of Christ. That's our way forward. That's how we're going to survive the trial. That's how we're going to come out the other side stronger and closer to the Lord and more able to be used by him in whatever way he has for us. So, as I often say, friends, it's uh, it's not rocket science. A lot of it's just common sense. And we know what we should be doing. We also have to remember there are powers at work that are trying to distract us from our prayer and from reading the word of God. Don't give them the victory. Don't give in to temptation to neglect prayer and neglect God's word. We have the capacity to stand against that temptation, to pray and to read and to overcome the powers that would want to take us away from that. So please, as you focus on prayer, quite simply, keep praying, keep washing your hands, keep looking up, keep safe and keep from falling into sin by giving in to temptation as well. The Lord will help you and the Lord will bless you until we meet again. Until then, it's bye for now.